Welcome to the first international workshop on agriculture vision at CVPR this year. My name is Jennifer Hobbs, and I'm the director of machine learning at IntelliNair. And we are happy to be partnering with the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and the University of Oregon to promote discussion, collaboration, and research around this important topic. Today, I'm excited to speak with you about bridging application and research and how we are contributing to both sides of this equation at IntelliNair. IntelliNair is a full season and full spectrum crop intelligence company focused on agriculture that delivers actionable intelligence to help farmers make data-driven decisions. Our goal is to organize and digitize the world's crop information and performance and to make it universally accessible and useful to deliver high yields, efficiencies, and sustainable farming to feed the human race. We do this by capturing a wealth of data from satellite and high resolution imagery to thermal and weather data, to machine data, soil, topography, and much more. This enables us to create a digital twin of the field, which can be used to understand and analyze how management decisions impact results and efficiencies. We are at the beginning of what I believe will be a truly revolutionary time for agriculture with this adoption of computer vision, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. If you happen to attend this year's iClear workshop, Computer Vision for Agriculture, you heard a lot about the exciting work that is already being done in this area. Here I'll highlight just a few. By leveraging the advances in computer vision, we are able to identify numerous types of yield threats earlier, enabling farmers to take action and mitigate massive losses, bringing relief to a sector already under economic stress. Precision agriculture has tremendous environmental advantages as well. We can identify specific areas of the field which are experiencing nutrient deficiencies or weed pressure and suggest treatment only to these areas, saving money for the farmers, but also conserving water and keeping unnecessary chemicals out of the water system. Additionally, we can monitor how management decisions impact soil erosion and the carbon cycle. Finally, we can address issues around food security by reducing loss and waste, and by anticipating disruptions to supply chains. All of these opportunities make agriculture a key application area for computer vision and machine learning. But this begs the question, is agriculture just another application? Can we simply take our favorite segmentation, classification, and counting techniques, label some data, and declare victory? And I think the answer to that is no. While these techniques can help us take a step in the right direction, I believe the nature of agricultural data, particularly the high resolution aerial imagery space that we are largely focused on here, will require expanding and broadening our understanding of our current computer vision approaches. And in this way, I believe agriculture will help to advance computer vision. In fact, I believe there are so many interesting opportunities and areas to explore that it will take dedicated teams of both academic and industrial researchers, much like we have here today, to meet these challenges head on. And I'd like to, sp to spend the rest of this talk highlighting some of these interesting topics. First, I think it's worth pausing to highlight why this data is different from, say, ImageNet. Particularly in aerial agricultural data, there is a strong, unique scale structure related to the plant size as well as the equipment used. At higher resolution, there's clear anisotropy over most of the field with the strong row patterns present in many cases. Should we treat this as noise and train models which are robust to it? Can we correct for these variations? Or does this provide us with additional information we should exploit? As anyone who participated in the workshop challenge saw, the patterns of interest come in many scales, from a few pixels for weeds or planter skips, which are boxed here in red, to waterways, which span acres of field, seen here on the far right in red. The multi-scale problem is a key research area within the larger vision community, and it is particularly interesting in agriculture, which has such a unique scale structure. Finally, many of the things we are interested in are truly patterns, not objects, and have a clear frequency component, which is why approaches like Fourier transforms have worked so well traditionally. In this far right image, we see the equipment patterns, a few of which I've highlighted, spanning the field at a very fixed and characteristic frequency. All of these force us to rethink how we construct our networks to extract the features of interest relevant to this domain, 
where important information may no longer be spatially well localized. Next, there are challenges around the size of the data. In this regard, we have many similarities to the medical imaging space. Broadly, applicable approaches have come out of the medical imaging field, and I believe the research in agricultural imagery will result in novel, far-reaching approaches as well. Here, we see highlighted a single block in a pineapple field. We capture this imagery at a high resolution, 10 centimeters per pixel, which enables us to see the individual flowers on plants. As a result, the block has almost 350 million pixels and is over one and a half gigabytes just for the RGB image. This scope and resolution in turn allows us to automatically count the over one and a half million flowering plants in this field. But in doing so, there are significant considerations around computational efficiency. The size of the data becomes even larger when we incorporate additional channels and sensors. Here we see just a few of the data channels that we capture. As our description of the feature field becomes richer and richer with an increased number of channels, the computational burden grows as well. So we have to explore different techniques to both learn from and inference against images that may be too large to fit into memory. So for people who are interested in work involving truly big data and parallelization challenges, this is certainly a worthwhile domain. And if the data isn't big enough for you yet, it only gets larger as we fly week over week across the season. Beyond the computational challenges more data poses, an interesting question arises, how do we most effectively capture large scale spatial and temporal context on data of the size? We have seen some very interesting and impressive work in previous years, primarily in the NLP space, looking to capture information over larger and larger windows. Here we look to extend these approaches to this very large multi-dimensional data set. And of course, we have a lot of this data. In 2020 alone, we will gather over 1.5 petabytes of data just from the Midwest. The scale of this data provides an exciting backdrop to explore techniques around training procedures and curriculum learning, search and few shot learning, among others. With this amount of data, we want to ensure that our model is being trained on the examples which are most informative for learning. Additionally, we would like to prioritize annotation of samples which are likely to be most useful for training. The temporal element of our data also provides rich opportunities for research. Our data provides us with a view into the entire life cycle of a field over a season. However, as the number of days between flights is somewhat variable, the temporal structure of this data is different from most other spatial temporal data, like movies. And again, has many similarities to the longitudinal data of medical imaging. Additionally, although the data is geo-referenced, the registration between flights is not pixel perfect. Should this misalignment be corrected, ignored, or learned? Handling this has been a topic of interest to the remote sensing community, as well as, once again, the medical imaging community. And I believe here, too, we can contribute to the approaches and methods which will span applications and domains. Finally, much like the autonomous vehicle space, we are obviously subject to the challenges of analyzing imagery, subject to the variabilities of weather, and other elements which can dramatically influence the global appearance of the field. Which leads us to the topic of color. The role of color in agriculture is very different from other domains. In many other applications, color is at best just another feature and often takes a back seat to shape features. In agriculture, color points to underlying metabolic, photosynthetic, and other physical processes of interest. Historically, Farmers and agronomists have relied on various indices, like NDVI, to understand the health of their field. How should we think about these indices in the context of deep learning? While all of the information is present in the raw channels, does explicitly representing these, or perhaps other, indices pose additional benefits or reduce the needed complexity of our architectures? Indices like NDVI are intuitive and point to underlying mechanisms, However, they can be strongly masked or altered by sources of noise, like clouds, shadows, and other lighting effects. In other domains, which are driven by shape features, often we can train the model to be robust to these variations. Here, how do we handle these variations where the color itself is of such key interest? There has been a lot of work done in this area, 
but I think it's a unique and very interesting area of exploration. Next, for those particularly interested in the application side, the need for mobile and edge computing is brought up repeatedly in conversations around deploying deep learning based models for agriculture in the real world. More often than not, farmers do not have access to high speed internet in their fields. How do we design our architectures so that they are both accurate as well as lightweight? And for any hardware people out there, how can this inspire the next generation of on device processing or sensors? so users can run state-of-the-art models for counting, segmentation, classification, or any other technique, task, and enable real-time decision-making. Finally, I want to conclude with the area that most excites me, which is the weekly, semi, and self-supervised problem. Annotation is hard, and I think it's particularly hard here, where you have an abundance of entities over a variety of scales with intricate boundaries and potential ambiguity leading to subjectivity. Putting geometric shapes over the top of buildings is far easier than tracing the intricate border of a tree or perhaps nebulous region of struggling plants. How good must that border be for our model to learn effectively? If high quality segmentation masks are too challenging to obtain, how can we direct the model to learn from the high resolution salient features of interest from bounding boxes or even higher level labels? 1.5 petabytes of data in one year is a huge amount of data between you and me, I don't want to annotate millions of acres of farmland. And if we are going to fully utilize this data, then we need to look to weekly, semi, and self-supervised methods to get us there. There are numerous other research topics that the agricultural domain lends itself to, including combining high and low resolution imagery from different sources, leveraging transfer learning and domain adaptation approaches, and multitask learning, just as a few examples. Given the venue, I focused here mostly on computer, the computer vision side, but agriculture is also a rich domain to explore forecasting, causal inference, as well as data acquisition optimization. And in Telenair, our vision for agriculture is that by tackling these complex research questions head on, we can advance both agriculture and computer vision. So I encourage anyone who thinks that agriculture is just another application to reconsider how solving these challenges can really advance our understanding of computer vision and machine learning. Thank you.